blessings and blessings from our amazing, beautiful studio where all you see is a white wall. So you don't even know what it looks like. Exactly. <laughs> and it doesn't even matter because it's white. <laughs> What's up, tribe? I'm Preston Smiles. Alexi Panos. And today's transmission is a juicy one. And it is the seven signs that you are in a soulmate relationship. How do you know? We about to tell you. We about to tell you. <laughs> but before we start, I want to speak about something um, that must be sort of covered before we even go into these signs. And that is about the conversation about forever. Mm. You see, in our society, we've been sold this idea this idea by Disney, by everything, that forever equals a good relationship and shorter ones or ones that don't last until we die next to each other at 89 years old. Like the notebook. Those are the bad ones, <laughs> exactly. So understand that everything we say in these seven signs is prefaced with a soulmate does not need to be somebody that you are with for the rest of your life. Yeah, a soulmate is a soul contract and it's truly about connecting with somebody who is meant to pull and elicit a certain part of your own soul out of you. So sometimes that can happen in shorter increments <laughs> and sometimes that can happen in larger increments. So we don't put a time on this. There's no timestamp, call forever. Yes. So just asterisk that. Exactly. So sign number one that you are in a soulmate relationship is there is an extreme amount of chemistry floating in between you. <laughs> it's like you are magnets that have just been suction cupped together and you can't stay away from each other. There's this thing that happens. Like, for those of you guys who don't know, this is my <laughs> wife, Alexi. Uh, right. He put a ring on it. I put a ring <laughs> on it. And the moment we met each other, it was like, uh, well, for me it was, it was instantaneous that we, we couldn't stay away from each other. And, and if you're in a relationship, or even if the other person doesn't get it at first, but somehow, even friendship-wise, you just always find each other swimming in each other's energy, that this is a sign that you're in a soulmate relationship. And let's talk about this, because a lot of people think chemistry is just like animalistic passion. Yes. And it's not. Chemistry is that like you actually like the person. Yes, <laughs> like, yes. They're your homie as well as the bonus stuff that comes with it. And I think a lot of people mistake passion for deep chemistry. Yes. Right? Because they have lust yes. and they're like, oh my God, I can't stay away from this person, but yet this person's so toxic for me and they're treating me terribly and all yes. of this stuff. <laughs> that is not a soulmate <laughs> that relationship. That is not a soulmate relationship. <laughs> that is called lust, right? <laughs> and nothing wrong with that either. But chemistry, true chemistry is about a deep yearning to be in each other's space because you truly enjoy sharing, communing, and connecting with somebody. So that's a really key factor to make sure you get the distinction of. It's not like passionate sex all the time. It's that I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I actually dig you as a human. I think you're amazing. I love our conversations. I can't get enough of your energy. Mm. And however that manifests, whether it clothes are on or off, uh. I dig it. Yes, indeed. That brings us to sign number two, that you are in a soulmate relationship. And that is, that is, number two, <laughs> is definitely you get triggered by this person. Oh, yeah. Now, I say this and I made it number two because it's so highly important that we understand that soulmates are our teachers. Yes. These are the people that, that bring up some of that stuff that we haven't wanted to face off with or look at in the past. And so they come in and they teach you and trigger you and call you forward. And the thing to really understand about this is there's a difference between a toxic, draining relationship yes. and a relationship that takes work. First of all, all of them do. <laughs> Second of all... All of them. Wait, pr press the pause on that. Yes. All, 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 all. Okay. All of them do. <laughs> However, there are certain soulmate relationships that 
bring out and elicit and trigger things within yourself that you didn't even know existed. That you didn't even want to know existed. Yes. And that's the thing, guys. Like The triggers, when you get into a conscious partnership especially, mm. there's nowhere to hide. Mm. In old relationships that weren't as conscious, you could kind of manipulate and do these little things and play the little games and play the victim card, go silent for a couple days and then kiss and make up, mm -hmm. right? When you get into a conscious soulmate relationship, somebody's gonna go, yeah, that doesn't work. Nope. That doesn't work here. Blah, 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 blah. We, need, we need to mature. We need to learn how to self-soothe, but we also need to learn how to stand powerfully in the places where we still have work to do. Mm. And that's a true distinction of a soulmate relationship is both partners are willing to play that game. Even if the ego gets the best of them in the moment, mm -hmm. they're willing to come back and say, you know what? My bad. <laughs> I see what I did there. Yes. I'm gonna take 100% responsibility for that and I'm committed to finding a resolution for myself that works for our partnership. Yes, and, and what's interesting about that is both of us have done that like a thousand times. Yes. However, we don't even need to go to each other anymore because we've been in such, um, practice. we've been in the practice so deeply that by the time it even gets to the point where it's, you know, because the thing to understand, about, and I know I'm jumping around here, but the thing to understand about triggers from a conscious place is, is the trigger is pointing to something within yourself. Always. It is not, I'm triggered by that person, they are to blame, they are a bad human. I'm it, triggered by your behavior yes. because you did that and that's why I'm triggered. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it could be as simple as somebody being um, more apt to ask for support then the other partner is used to asking. It could be as simple, we used to trigger each other. Alexi, funny enough, when we go to the grocery store, we had like a dinner party, right? I'd say, well, it's a potluck. People are supposed to bring stuff. She wants to buy everything in the grocery store for everyone at the potluck. And I'm like, well, well, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I like to have some stuff there for people to start with. Some stuff. <laughs> she was buying everything. Guys, I like to host. Yes. I, I was taught that as a host, you See? make sure See? that you have certain It's happening stuff. on camera right now. <laughs> this was a trigger for me because I'm like, it's called a pot luck, which means Presence, other people like, don't bring... say anything up. No. Just let <laughs> everyone bring everything. And I'm like, uh... Everybody brings something to the no. table. We will bring a little bit, and everybody else will bring something. Which means we have the house. Yes. <laughs> so, point being, this is not to blame someone else for your stuff. This is a opportunity for you to evolve. Yes. One of the reasons why I find myself in the position that I am now is because I've been in conscious partnership with Alexi. This is a soulmate relationship that has leveled me up just in her being her. Which brings me to sign number three, and that is a soulmate relationship is so much fun. Mm. I mean, it is just pure it's joy. Fun. Yes. Yeah. Well, pure joy, and let's define this. Yes. Because again, everybody wants joy all the time. They want happiness all the time. Everything's perfect all the time. That's not what we're saying. Joy for us encapsulates the ride. Yes. Right? And, and we talk about the ride as like a roller coaster, right? People wait for hours, like two to three hours in line for these roller coasters, yes. right? Why? Because they want the thrill of the up, the, oh my gosh, something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. <laughs> and then the drop, your stomach's up in your throat, and you're like, oh my God, I'm making stuff, this is crazy, get it over, I don't wanna do it, I don't wanna do it. You're screaming, there's like snot and slobber coming out from all orifices, but, why do we do that? As human beings, we actually are programmed to enjoy the ride, yes. but societally we've been taught and programmed that the ride is supposed to be safe. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be secure. It's supposed to be controlled. Nothing is supposed to go wrong. You're never supposed to feel if out We're of arguing, this isn't right. <gasps> Arguments, oh my God, God. we're right. not soulmates. Yes, you are. So you really want to take joy and redefine it. Mm. Because for us, we recognize the joy in the disagreement. We recognize the joy in the triggers because for us, trigger, disagreement, conflict equals deepening of our partnership. Yes. So there is joy to be had in that because not only is it deepening our partnership, but I understand him more mm. as a human, as an individual autonomous person that likes to do weird stuff like this. <laughs> and 
he understands me more in that way as well. And what does that create? It mm. only creates a deeper understanding of each other. Yes. Which brings us to a deeper understanding of presence where we can Blue. be in deeper joy. Rastafari. In whatever it is we do. Because we're not it. trying to change the other Exactly. Person. Exactly, guys. It, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been um, just sort of stalking her by staring at her while she's asleep and just going like it's not weird yeah it's not weird at all um just going like this shit this is like stealing candy from a baby now i don't even understand where that term came from yeah, and why anyone weird. would want to steal candy from a baby why is anyone giving candy to a child yes let's and talk about that let's America. just not eat candy anymore let's talk about that western world yes but you get the point there's been so many times where i'm just like wow this is my life it's so beautiful and one of the things that and I'm just gonna say it different than Alexi but it's the same thing it's impossible for you to understand left without having a reference for right you can't tell me about up if I have never experienced down and so one of the reasons why it's so fun and so beautiful is because of the polarity of the duality it's all the same thing right and we can find it in the soup, right? Just being in the dance. Alexi and I are in the dance. That means good, bad, ugly, indifferent. That means the profane and the profound. That means the entire thing. And that is why our relationship is so damn strong because we're not trying to get the rainbows and butterflies all day, every day. Yeah. However, when those do come, and they do, we embrace those just like we embrace the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so joy, really redefine what joy means to you. and. And doing that in your relationship will shift how you relate to the rest of your life mm -hmm. as well, by yes. the way. Because if you're constantly trying to control everything so that it's all perfect and it's all happy all the time, you're gonna be miserable. It's a conundrum, right? It's sure. a paradox. You cannot control this thing. So let go a little bit, surrender, and enjoy the ride. Uh -huh. You waited in line for it, so just might as well enjoy it. Right? Just wait. <laughs> Sign number four. Sign number four. That you are in a soulmate relationship. How do we know? How do you know? How do you know? How, how do I know? Do you know? Tell me. Do you know? You tell me. Is that there is a soul recognition. Mm -hmm. There's a familiarity that's there in the air. There's this thing where it's like, I've met you before. I know you. We've done this dance before. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, and soul recognition is really special. It's something that you can't manufacture. You can't write it on a list of like, here's all the things I want in my ideal partner. And then you meet the person, you're like, soul recognition, check. It's <laughs> no, like, you won't get that. It's one of those things that you almost can't plan for it. And when it does happen, it's so jarring and it so wakes you up out of a slumber because it feels so unique. Yeah. And, and that thing, that indescribable thing, is truly your soul going, whoa, there's something in alignment here. Something about how I vibrate matches up with something about how this person vibrates. And whatever that is, whether you want to say past lives or this, this, and that, whatever you want to say, there's a match. And if you can acknowledge that match and lean into that match mm. and just see what's there, because sometimes that match will line up and it's just a friendship. Yep. And it's a soul friendship. And Sometimes you it's a dog. Like yes. you meet an animal and you'll be like, yo, like we've done this. We have friends that have this dog <laughs> that is like terrible. Um, and <laughs> terrible. It's not a terrible dog. It does. The dog doesn't like me. Um, <laughs> That's but, why it's terrible. Yes, I love this dog. But the dog, every dog likes me, but this dog and the dog and the owners, both of them, but one of them in particular, the, the, the female, they're like sisters from like 13 lifetimes they ago. Absolutely. They have a, a deep soul <laughs> recognition that is like, it just boggles me. So it's not even always with your partners. Um, and sometimes it's like with a grandfather or yeah. a grandmother. You're just like, yo, like, I love my mom, but like. Something about that person. Yes. Plays. Yes. And so recognizing that and actually leaning into that with whoever it might be, whether it's a friend, an animal, a stranger that you might meet where you're just like, whoa, something in here just gels, yes. just vibes. Really leaning into that versus kind of chalking it up to just, you know, oh, that's, that was weird. Mm -hmm. Like, lean in. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, we're getting so many signs all the time that life is really magical. Yes. There's all these juicy parts of life that we're just so busy that we don't even see. So tune in, tune into yourself and lean in. Number five, 
The fifth reason or sign that you are in a soulmate relationship is there is... I'm gonna do it. Uh, don't do that stupid <laughs> ass thing. This is a dance that I absolutely hate. She made this dance up. It's like a bird dance. It's a stupid dance. It's a bird dance. However, it it's leads me into number five, which dance. is there is a deep <laughs> respect. Number five like is dance. all about <laughs> respect. You know you're in a soulmate relationship when there is just this thing amongst you that's like, yo, I see you. And you feel seen. There's this part of you that's like, you know what? I respect their ideas. I respect their hustle. I respect their love. I respect their gangster. I respect what they've been through. And they they respect me as well. Yeah, and respect, the second cut of that yes. is that you respect them enough to honor who they are. Yes. And celebrate it so much that they feel free to be that. Yes. And that's a big thing that, you know, we've kind of dived into this whole codependent reality of what relationships are supposed to be like and while there is an actual physical dependency that does happen when you become a unit like you guys start like having similar heartbeats and the stress of one affects the stress of another and they have proven this scientifically so biologically we can be dependent on each other however we have conscious choice right and our conscious choice tells us that I can choose whether I'm biologically attached to this person or not. Mm. I can choose to self-soothe. I can choose to um, kind of take care of my own fears and let this person shine. Yep. Because here's the thing, most of us fall in love with the shine. We love the shine. Oh, the shine's great. I love this person because they're so this and they're so that. And then we get really close to them. Mm-hmm. And then the shine gets scary. Yep. Because if they shine that bright, well, somebody else might see them. Yep. And if somebody else sees them, well, then they won't be mine anymore. Attached. And then, <laughs> if they won't be mine anymore, then I won't be safe. And I'll be alone. And I'll be sad. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's the fear cycle. So if we let the fear cycle run our relationships, we'll be holding on like this. Mm-hmm. And what does that create? Resistance. Somebody that wants to do this. They want to go. <laughs> like, yo, that does not feel good, right? Here's another, like, just, like, interesting like a side note um, thing about Alexi, for example, for example, there's a deep respect between both of us. Alexi is very conceited about her feet. I love my feet. Her feet are ugly, but They're I, amazing. but I respect her feet game because. <laughs> See, he wants to say that, but he, I used to be a foot model. She like, says this every time. Hilarious, but true. This, this is. <laughs> I used to model shoes sandals because there. my feet were so pretty that they could be barefoot. Her feet are ugly as hell and I respect her. He just, he's projecting because his feet have no arch <laughs> which might have a beautiful dance. I do arch. have an arch. Okay. All right <laughs> sign number six that you are in a soulmate relationship is you have a shared vision. Yes. There is a way of viewing and being with the world that is maybe not exact, but it overlaps. There's a part of you, of both of you. And I remember Alexi and I on our first date, which she didn't believe was a date, it was a date for me. It was a work meeting. It was a date. And during our first date slash work meeting, we started talking about vision. And I was actually just talking about this today. Yep, I'm, sh- I'm sure she was sharing with whoever that was, was that there was a moment where I was like, holy crap, we have a very similar vision. We have a very similar through line on how we navigate through the world. And so if you are in a relationship with somebody where it's not necessarily exact, but there's a part uh, where it overlaps and you guys are meeting each other, this is a sign of a soulmate relationship. Yeah. And to take this a secondary cut, because a lot of people will look at our relationship and say, oh, well, that's easy. You guys do the same work and you do the same stuff. And do I need to find someone that does the same thing as me? No. No, but you do have to have a similar vision for what the relationship means Mm. for your lives. Yes. So you guys can do two totally different things, two totally different jobs, totally different lives. But when you come together in relationship and partnership, you've got to make sure that that partnership has a shared purpose. For some people, partnership is all about like diving deep and becoming the best possible versions of ourselves through a committed partnership. Mm. That's our relationship vision. That's what relationship means to us. For some people, relationship is about exploring their sexuality. For some people, relationship is about having that like homey best friend. You've got to decide what the purpose and vision is of a relationship to you and your partner and make sure you guys are aligned that it means the same thing. And you're in it for the same reasons. Mm. Which brings us to juicy last sign number seven 
that you are in that what's that dance getting it's like the bank head bouncers. <laughs> Don't do it. Come on, ride this train one. Come on, don't do that ever again. Okay. Side number seven that you are in a soulmate relationship is you communicate without words. There is a thing. You are so deeply connected that when your partner is off, you know it. When your partner is doing some dirt that they shouldn't be, you know it. When, when your partner is in their love space and experiencing so much joy, you can feel it whether you are in the room or not. There have been so many times where I've known that I was in trouble just based on the way she was looking at her computer. She didn't even look at me. She was looking at her computer. I'm like, yep, I'm in trouble. It's about to happen. Because about to I know intuitively I can feel her. We're so attached that I can feel when she is off and when she's on. And when she's stressed, and when she's uh, feeling, you know, frisky, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can feel the sex, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the big part about this, guys, this goes back to that biological connection. We are actually scientifically, biologically feeding off of each other. Yes. My vibration affects his vibration. And when we're so closely intertwined, especially when you live with your partner, Blue. that happens quite often. So if you can pay attention to what's happening in here, you can quite intuitively lean into the conversations verbally mm. that need to happen mm. in order to bring things back to a cohesiveness. All those things. There you have it, my there people. You have it. We love you so much. Yeah. Blessings and blessings. If you are new to the tribe, new to my vibe, our vibe, the partners in shine vibe, if you are new and you're on YouTube or Facebook, I ask that you a, tag somebody. B, leave a comment and tell us which one of these seven resonated the most for you. Like in terms of like, which one do you need to take on? Exactly. Like, oh, I need to lean into that one a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. And C, click the share button and share this with as many people as possible. We don't have a giant team behind us or a marketing machine. You are our family, you are our tribe. If this resonated, if this touched your heart in any way, we ask that you share the video, leave a comment, and go love on your people. Yeah, and tag your boo in this video. Tag yo boo. And you got a boo. Tag, tag yo boo. boo. Tag yo boo. Bird dance. Don't do it. Exit. Don't do it. That <laughs> dance. The that's the worst dance. On the exit. I can't even hit the button. Because Stop. the bird dance needs to live. Let, let it live. Nope, nope. Every time you get knocked down, you get to stop running back to the thing that knocked you down. That means letting go of these old patterns and unfollowing people in real life. Unfollowing people in real life.